So now we're going to look at confidence intervals for the proportion or probability or percentage of time that something occurs. Okay, so take a minute to read the problem. So as I'm sure you're well aware many classes on campus are taught by graduate students. Okay, perhaps uh, some of your classes now are being taught by grad students or GTAs. Okay. So we want to do a 90% confidence interval for the probability that a randomly selected 100 level math class is taught by a GTA. Okay, so we have a sample of 296 students who are taking 100 level math classes. And the proportion of those that have a GTA teaching their class is 130 divided by 296. Okay, you want to leave this fraction alone. You don't want to round it. We need the exact value okay, as we move forward with our formulas. All right, so speaking of formulas, we need to pick the right formula to use. So our parameter of interest is P, the population proportion. Okay. So whether or not sigma is known or the population is normally distributed, those two conditions don't really apply here in this scenario. Okay. We do have a sample size requirement, but notice it's not the bigger than 30. Okay. We need n times p hat to be bigger than 5 and n times 1 minus p hat to be bigger than 5. Okay. So p hat is simply your sample proportion. That's your frequency divided by n. When you multiply that by n, the n's are going to cancel and we're left with the frequency. So what this really simplifies down to is you need at least five observations where your event occurs and five where the event doesn't occur. Okay, so in this particular problem, we had 130 classes taught by GTAs, definitely more than five occurrences. Okay, so n times p hat would be 130. Okay. And the number of classes that were not taught by GTAs was 166. So n times 1 minus p hat would be 166, which is also very much bigger than 5. So as long as we have at least five occurrences of the event happening and not happening, okay, then we have this sampling distribution right, that's based on a z-score. And then after a little bit of algebra, that yields our confidence interval formula over here on the far right. Okay, so this is the formula we're going to use. So we just decided this is the right formula. We know p hat, we know n, so the only work to do here is to find the right z-score. So you're going to do a confidence interval. So draw the z-graph, area in the middle, 0 0.90, 0 0.05 on each end. Okay, so inverse norm is going to find us a z-score of 1.645. The key is to draw the graph. Once we have all of our parts, we're simply going to plug in the numbers and watch all the details just come into place. So p hat was 130 over 296. So everywhere we had a p hat, I'm going to insert that fraction. We calculated the z-score to be 1.645. So again, that 1.645 is being multiplied by the big square root over there on the right. So we need to do all that and simplify that into a single number before we do the addition and subtraction. Okay, So at this point, we're going to go ahead and simplify and approximate the fraction because we need to round at some point to get a final answer. So 130 divided by 296 is the 0.439. And the 1.645 times the big giant square root is the 0.047. Okay, so once again, this is our point estimate on the left, plus or minus our margin of error. P hat is my best point estimate of P. Okay. All right, so now when I add and subtract the 0.047, all right, from the 0.439, we end up with 0.392 as our lower limit, our lower estimate on the probability, and 0.486 as our upper estimate on the probability. So that's as an interval, as an inequality, we might write it this way. Right? P is between 0.392 and 0.486. So the probability that a randomly selected 100 level math class ends up being taught by a GTA 
is somewhere between 0.392 and 0.486. That's what we're saying here. Moving on to the next example. Again, if you need to pause to read the problem, go right ahead. Okay, so again, we know our sample size is 462. All right, we know that in our sample of 462, all right, 356 of those had changed their major. So our sample proportion is 356 out of 462. Okay. Now notice here we're doing a constant for the percentage. Okay, so choosing our formula, the parameter of interest. Right? Percentage is proportion multiplied by 100. So the parameter of interest is proportion P. Again, whether or not we know sigma or whether or not the population is normally distributed does not apply here. We need our sample size requirement, at least five in and five out of our category. Okay, so in this particular case, we had way more than five people who changed their major at least once and more than five that had not changed their major. Okay, so we met this condition, which means we can use right, this sampling distribution okay, and this composite formula over here. Okay, so the same one we used last time. Okay, so we know P had an N. Again, it's the Z-score we got to do the work on. We want to be 99% confident. So we've now done multiple confidence intervals that were based on Z-scores that were 99% for our confidence level. So the Z-score is always going to be the same right? under these conditions. Right? Every 99% confidence interval based on Z-score uses a Z-score 2.576. Okay? So we're going to plug in all of our numbers, simplify down, And we end up with 77.1% and uh, give or take 5%. Again, we need to turn this from proportions into percentages because the problem asks us for a constant for the percentage. Okay. So our point estimate for the percentage would be 77.1%. Our margin of error is give or take 5%. Okay. So this is the format you often see polls presented in. All right. All right. They're saying... Polls show candidate X is going to get 77.1% of the vote. Uh, the margin of error on this poll is 5%. Okay, as a little side disclaimer, that's what they're talking about. Okay, as an in, as an interval, it would look like this, or as an inequality, you could write it this way. Again, all these are saying the same thing. All right, so take a minute to read the problem. Pause the video if you need to. So, we're looking for a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of uh, UT students that have gotten a parking ticket, uh, parking where they shouldn't have. All right, so what do we know? We have a sample of 2,357 students, and the proportion of those that have gotten a parking ticket right, was 864 out of 2,357. Okay. So parameter of interest, once again, is P. Right. Whether or not we know sigma or the population is normally distributed don't really apply. Our sample size conditions, we need at least five people who have and five who have not gotten parking tickets where they shouldn't be parking. And so we are once again going to be using this same composite formula we have on the last two problems. So we know N and P hat. The work here is to find the Z-score. Again, 95% confidence. So here in the middle needs to be 0.95. Draw the graph. Right? Then you'll see the numbers. Split the extra probability in half. 0.025 in each tail. Use your inverse norm and you have your Z-score. Now it's a matter of plugging in the numbers. In P hat, everywhere C P hat goes the fraction, 864 out of 2,357. Okay, your Z score we just determined to be 1.96. Uh, 
So we're going to simplify in our point estimate, 0 0.367, right, with our margin of error, 0 0.019. So once we get these cranked out, we can also rewrite this as an interval by subtracting and adding the 0.019 to the uh, 0.367 or as an inequality. And so we are 95% sure that somewhere between uh, the proportion of students that have gotten a parking ticket on campus, parking where they knew they shouldn't be parking, is somewhere between 0.348 and 0.386. Now, notice here I didn't multiply these by 100 because we weren't asked for percentages. We were asked for proportions. All right, so we're going to leave things right here. All right, this is our last example for compositionals about proportions. If you have any questions about the topics covered in this video or anything else that's happening in your statistical reasoning class, talk to your instructor, go to their office hours, or take advantage of the free tutoring available in the Math Tutorial Center. Good luck and go Vols!